It's actually letting me use the same camera for two different things right now. So obviously Windows is fucked. <laughs> now that we got all that shit out of the way, where were we? Uh, we were right about the part where you push the button. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 129 for Thursday, the 25th of May, 2017. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk geek shit and celebrate all things geek and and take three. Oh yeah, something like that. Uh, that dude is Amos and I'm Kent. Uh, glad to be here. Man. Hey, hey I got a question for you, man. Show. What? I what? got a question for you. Why do I have to be Amos? Um, Because I'm not. Okay. Well, I'm all right. I, I see your point. Like I hear your <laughs> words, and I, I understand what you're trying to do there. But I, I think maybe it's not. Um, uh, I think you're full of per- shit. Well, per- perhaps if you could, if you could elaborate on maybe even just the purpose of your question. Are you are you asking because you are upset with the name Amos? Are you confused by the name Amos? Are you? Uh, just uh, wondering uh, out loud so that mi- perhaps we can give some exposition to our audience. Where are you um, coming from with the question? Thursday. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Welcome to hi. Um, Amos. I I just uh, I just I that was that was a, a, a that was too. So we've been talking for like forty five minutes now, and that was basically a summary of all that we talked about. <laughs> that right there wraps it up very nicely. People in the chat room can tell you, holy shit, it's been that kind of pre show. So, yeah. Hey, um, we're supposed to have a guest tonight, man. Yeah. So. Real cool. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually, I believe it was two weeks to the day uh-huh, we were uh-huh. supposed to have Molly Wood on, mm-hmm. and uh, we didn't get Molly Wood. Mm-hmm. She sent us mm-hmm. an email. We did. Do, we, all over we, her we did get Molly Wood. Uh, not live on the episode, though. No, no, no. I, I see what you did there. No. Right, and she apologized all over mm-hmm. herself. In fact, invited us to publicly shame her. And right. We were like, nah. We're not going to do that to Molly Wood. Right, right. Not not and just because like, it's Molly Wood, but uh, also because it's Molly Wood. But mostly because it's Molly Wood. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and so she said, how about the 25th of May? Mm. I'm good. The 25th of May, let's do it then. Mm. And we were like, hell yeah. Mm-hmm, We've got mm-hmm. an SB coming on next week. Mm-hmm. We don't have anybody for the following week. Mm-hmm. We can totally do Molly Wood on the 25th. Yeah, it sounds like, good, dude. Let's do it. Hell yeah. So, today is the 25th of May, mm-hmm. the day we get Molly Wood on. Mm-hmm. We confirmed it last night via Twitter, I, I, I offhandedly, uh, uh, self-admittedly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then, uh, we get to about, uh, I don't know, 7.50, no. uh, my, well, 7.50 Mountain, my time. So, mm. 6.50 Pacific mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we'll use Molly's native time zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get to about 6.50, and Amos and I are like, hmm, what if it happens again? Do we even have a show? Mm. Amos is like... Well, Amos is like, do we have a show anyway? No. We just carry on as normal. <laughs> so then Amos is like, let me email her real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, went, you, you wanted to go that way. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so so take it from there. Where 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 are we, where are we at with Molly? Um, her, her response was, uh, um, oh, first of all, I emailed her and said, good evening, ma'am. We are about to go live and haven't heard from you. Are you going to be able to make it? Signed, Amos and Kent. And her response, which I thought was so fucking appropriate. Um, her response, so her response, go ahead. You, you read it out though. You read it in your best Mollywood voice, um, uh, taken from that. Huh? Take 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 it take it. Uh, this is this is uh this is this is Molly Wood, as she's typing the email. So this is her internal voice, which isn't always the voice that comes out. It's her internal voice. Uh, say it in the the mindset of her internal voice and go. 
balls. Well, I'm going to leave that part out. You guys, I'm a monster. Next Thursday, I swear to God, I am free. I swear. Nighttime is hard. Sad face. Don't forget the sad face. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so we don't have Molly live on the program tonight, but Molly is very much here in spirit. Uh, <laughs> because we're gonna <talk> <laughs> <laughs> New phone, who dis? Um, we are woodless. <laughs> we are with, we are without wood. So we're here in a little bit. We're we're gonna we're, what we're gonna do is we decided you know instead of having having all this behind the scenes, we want to respond to Molly. We haven't responded to her yet. We want to respond to Molly. But we want to do so with as many puns and with as much uh, uh, self uh, gratification as possible. Um, and we want your help, chat room. Yeah, we definitely. want you to start breaking out the best puns you can and start. How would you respond? In what way should we respond to the Mollywood in order to? Uh, <laughs> you may have to pre-tape this one. <laughs> I am a stone. You don't care. Um, I just referred to myself in the third person. That's weird. I don't ever I do that. Well, I've been talking to you and referring to Amos as a second person. Right. So cool. And no, these aren't chicken nuggets. They are um, Krabby Patties <laughs> from Easter. I mean, Krabby Patties. Uh, yeah. So. Before the show began, we were going to respond to Molly, and Amos had the great idea of let's get chat rooms to help, and we will we will craft an email to her with everyone's help, and uh, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about normal stuff too, but throughout yeah, we'll, the show, we'll, we'll get back uh, to this. So, uh, Wabbit Magic says uh, no pressure. Um, we're we're gonna give you some time. We're gonna, we have some other stuff to talk about. We'll come back to this towards the end of the show. And that's when we will uh, combine our brains together. We might even do a post show if it, if it just yeah, takes too long or, or whatever. Yeah, depending on how, how long right. it takes to get through our crap. But either way, we're going to do it with your help. And um, that's about it. That's that's what that's going to go. Man, we, we were talking about crazy week, having, having a, just a ridiculously crazy week. My week started out with bees. Do you remember... Um, Almost exactly a year ago, I had to call a beekeeper to mm-hmm. come extract a uh, colony from mm-hmm. my backyard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, same place. Yeah, same type of bees. Yeah, new colony decided to move in. Uh, I was doing uh, yard work on same, Sunday. Same beekeeper. Uh, no, so uh, beekeeper didn't have to come out. Oh, you decided uh, to keep him yourself this time, which I mean is really the wise choice. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, fresh fresh honey is always fantastic. Fresh and local honey like allergies be gone, right? Exactly. And, the, you know, that's a really, really good point because Stephanie Sassian has terrible local al- allergies. Mm. The, so so I, yeah. I think you should prescribe uh, the, heavy the, dose the of backyard honey. honey. Backyard mm. honey. Backyard honey. Wrap it, put a little RX on it. Put it, put it in a fancy little bottle like this and just... Yeah, hell yeah. Do you, do you like do you like getting some backyard honey? Um, suddenly, I don't think your backyard honey is the same as the backyard honey that was in my head. Hmm. <laughs> so, it was a brand new colony that that moved in, and those damn things work fast, dude. Because like, as recently as two days prior, there were no bees in my backyard, but suddenly there were thousands. I actually went over there. If you remember last year, my in-ground sprinkler system, the uh, control box for that is where they mm-hmm. took up residence. Right. Well, same thing here. So, I went over there with a like basically a like a rod, and lifted the lid off of it, and uh, exposed the colony. And uh, of course, they didn't like that. Uh, a couple thousand bees turned into like. Uh, Maybe, I don't know, uh, 20,000 bees. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of bees. And uh, they didn't like it very much. So I left them alone 
for about an hour, let them calm down. Uh, the, you know, the shade moved to that part of the yard, so it kind of calmed them down. Because when when it gets to be evening time, the bees start to wind down. Right. And uh, I got a good look at the colony. I could tell it was a new colony. There was almost no honey in it. It was just fresh, fresh cells, fresh uh, honeycomb. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to to text the beekeeper and tell him, you know, hey man, uh, get it. You're going to have to come get another hive. And I did so, and he was like, all right, cool, man. Uh, I won't be able to make it there until Friday, uh, but I'll see you then. <laughs> he said, stay the fuck out of your yard until Friday. Right, Which, right. He, so, does he know you have dogs? <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so the next day, so Monday comes, I come home from work, and I go into the backyard and go to check out the colony, and I've gone from thousands of bees to about 10 bees. Mm. they packed their shit and left. And here it is wow. Thursday and no bees. Wow. Yeah. So I think the act of me disturbing their brand new home made them decide, fuck this shit, let's go somewhere else. So what you're saying is if you move into a house with you and your family, and then three days after you get there, someone comes in and removes the roof, you don't want to <laughs> live there anymore? Yeah, it's time to go, man. I got to go. If somebody <laughs> takes the roof off my house the day after I move in. <laughs> That's just, I'm just stating that for the record right now. Man, did you have any bees or, or was your week bee less? Um, so I, I tell you what, man. We spent, I, I don't know if you noticed, I got a little sun. Like I'm, my arm is a different shade of, than my head. Uh, we less white. Yeah. <laughs> Actual color instead of just like like negative skin tone. Um <clears throat> I we we had regionals, soccer regionals this weekend. And that was Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Of course I had surgery on Wednesday. We did a podcast on Thursday, so you, you were up to speed at least to that point. Um, Friday and Saturday. Saturday comes along and the, the twins actually win regionals. They win regionals for the third region. There's only three regions in Alaska because there's only like 14 schools. Tundra 1, Tundra 2, and Tundra 3? Uh, yeah. Arctic, Tundra, and what the fuck are we doing living here? And um, so they win regionals. It's great. It's awesome. Really, mm-hmm. really cool. Immediately after the girls play, the boys play. And it was the same referee crew as was on their game, on the girls' game. But the boys, when it was, it was maddening. At one point, now you know they, they play their soccer field is a football field. It's you know expanded beyond the boundaries on the on the sides, but it's just as long. And their goal, it comes up underneath the goalpost for the football. Okay. Okay. It's actually attached, like it's 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 its whole thing. At one point, the visiting team, because the Colony High was the home team again, it was done at Colony High, so you know they're just that good. At one point, they kicked the ball. It went up and hit the crossbar on the football goal, bounced back in towards the field, and then one of the other the the people from the other team headbutted it, and it went into the goal. And they counted that as a goal. The problem okay. is that anytime the ball hits a surface other than the playing field, it is no longer in play. If it hits the top bar of the goal and comes back in, it's still in play. But these bars are separated by about a foot. And it mm. hit the football goal, goal post, not the soccer goal like uh, 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 net post. Right. Now, was this a, mis- a mistake of, of the referees because they didn't see it properly or a mistake because they didn't understand the rules? Does it matter? Or was it, a, was it e- neither of those? Was it like a, a, just a blatant not giving a shit about? The, well, the if you base it on the rest of the game, it's blatant them not giving a shit. At one, uh-huh. at one, point, the, the, <laughs> at one point, the players were tackling each other so hard that I could have sworn someone was going to end up in the hospital. Holy cow! Mm. And the rest weren't calling shit. Well, how did the girls handle all of that? The well, the we won, so it was less of a deal. We won by like 
two goals, I think. The okay. boys lost three to one. One of their goals that they made got called back. One of the other team's goals should never have counted, as I just stated. Um, so it should have been an even game, but they lost three to one. So they came in second for regionals. They still went to state. They lost to state like six to two or something like that. So in the grand scheme of things, it didn't really matter. But holy shit, the crowd was livid. The crowd yeah. on both sides was unhappy. And that's something I don't normally see. But then the assistant principal came out in front of us and was telling us, now we're behind our teams. Like both teams sit on the same sidelines and the crowd, the majority of the crowd, all but like maybe 15 people on the far end of the field are behind the teams. And we're divided up. You know, most of the colony people are sitting behind colony and most of the other team are sitting behind the other team. The, the vice principal of the school comes out and is telling us to calm down and to st and to keep it positive and this and that. And, and, and that's fine. I understand, you know, keeping it positive. Like, we're totally positive. There was no criticism about the players on either team. Mm -hmm. It was all about the refs and the fact that they weren't calling anything. And when they did call it, it was blatantly wrong. Yeah. Um, and of course, anytime you tell, and none of us are drunk, it's like three o'clock in the afternoon. As far as I know, none of us are drunk. None of us are drinking. They don't sell beer there. Anytime you tell a bunch of rowdy parents to calm down, we're okay yeah, with your kids. They do exactly that. They calm you, right oh, down. Oh, right? of course they do. Of course they do. And the irony here is that now everybody's pissed off. Everybody's yelling at the rest. Everybody's, I mean, it was, it was awful. During the first game when the girls were playing, apparently it's not, not as serious. I, I guess if it, it, because I was yelling at the refs and the crowd was telling me to shut up. But during the boys game, it's fine to, for everyone to be yelling at the refs. Yeah. So I don't know. It was just, it was completely all the, all the refereeing here in the state of, of, of Alaska that I've seen so far needs to just go away. They need to stop. I've not met a single ref that actually knew half the rules, hey. let alone how to officiate. Are, are they are they volunteers though? No, they're paid. They're paid. Yeah, because that, that was the, my first question. <laughs> my first question is: Are you? Uh, uh, do you need to stop volunteering, or are you just really bad at your job? Wow! And uh, that's when I was notified that they are paid one hundred and fifty dollars per game to officiate. And now we can't. We as a school district can't afford to pay for equipment and shit because we have to pay for the refs at $150 a game to poorly officiate. I could officiate all these games. Every one of them just, I'll sign me up for all the schools. I'll do it all the time because <laughs> apparently there's no qualifications and no. Oh, and I asked about, um, uh, anytime you have a, 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 a re, you know, referees, right? The, the governing body, if you will, there's gotta be someone that keeps these people in check. They're just a really bad referee. I yeah. asked about that. Not a single soul. They're all like individual contractors. There's no, there's no central body to complain to. So yeah, I, I mean, there's got to be the athletic, like the state the, athletic the, commission or something like that. Well, uh, maybe not necessarily that, but like the the school district, right? Uh, athletic committee or whatever, whatever it's called. I don't know. Yeah, according to our athletic director here locally, there is none. Um, which I mean, after having but, been through two seasons of sports, because it's him. And right. he just doesn't want to do it. Well, that's just it. After being through basketball season and, and, and soccer season, I now know that he's not doing his job. Right. Because right. it was a complete shit show. So I, I know yeah. uh, I know what I want to do when I get out of the military. I want to I want to go for his job. Yeah. Um, wow. And I, I told him as much, too, which didn't make him very happy. Uh, but anyway, so I tell my, my, my kids, uh, all my kids, practice as if you're in a game. Like, you, you don't – because, you know, I, I used to coach soccer – for the for the little leagues when my when my uh, daughters were in that and everything else, and you don't practice like you're practicing. You practice like you're playing. That way, when play time right. comes, it's nothing new. It's no transition. You just keep going. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> even chat room says 150 bucks to coat to to ref a game. Let me get my coat. Um, yeah, I tell them to practice as if they're playing. Go balls out all the time. You go 100 percent all the time. That way, you you never short yourself when you're on the field. Well, Madison took that a little too seriously and is now due for surgery by the same chiro or same uh, orthodontic or orthopedic clinic that did my knee uh, a week from, well, this coming Wednesday. 
because she landed on the ball and rolled her ankle, broke her tibia, fibula, t- broke her fibula in two places and sheared some bone off her tibia. Uh, it, yeah, like destroyed her ankle. So she's now in for surgery and will be out for the rest of this of, of the summer. So she oh didn't play God. in states today. Yeah. Oh Jesus! Okay. <laughs> well, that sucks for her. Um, <laughs> but at least it's not during the school year. So I mean, she's got a license to basically sit around for the next twelve weeks and watch uh watch Netflix. Yeah. She's gonna not- watch movies, dude. I I saw a movie this week. Yeah. Yeah, the new Alien movie, Alien Covenant. Or right. as I call it, Prometheus Two. <laughs> I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask how closely, uh, how closely it reminded you of Prometheus. If this is like uh, another, uh, th- this is actually because Prometheus wasn't an alien movie, though. Well, it, it, it was, very much was an alien movie. It but, was. Uh, it was. It was same universe, same time frame ish. Blah 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 blah. But not an alien movie. And then you watch it, and it's clearly an alien movie. Right. The only thing not alien about it is that it doesn't have alien, the word alien, in right. the title. Right. This That's... one actually does have alien in the title. So yeah. is this one yeah. more alien or less alien than Prometheus? I would say it's more alien because, well, I'm not going to say because why, because spoilers. Uh, but I didn't hate this movie. I didn't love this movie. This movie was fine. Hmm. I thought Prometheus was fine. But I will say that I I really really love the alien universe. I, I I just love the like the fictional future history, if you will, that they created and the the lore that's mm-hmm. behind it. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. And Prometheus, I don't think is particularly a good movie, but I absolutely adore the viral marketing campaign that went into it and the overall contribution to the lore of the alien mythology and i kind of feel the same way about covenant covenant was a little more fun there was there was a little more action uh i would say a little less history lesson what's that a little less history lesson yeah yeah It, it was definitely there was some history there you learned some things about the lore Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was a much more fun movie, and but I will still say for the same thing uh, that that I said about Prometheus, I love this movie for the contribution to the lore more than I enjoy actually watching the movie. If that makes sense. Gotcha. Gotcha. So if you like that kind of thing, if you like backstory and and you know d- deep dive on lore or whatever, especially if you like Prometheus, I highly recommend Covenant. But it's mm. it's no it's definitely no Aliens. Okay. Um, where, where does this movie fall in, 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 in line with everything? Cause Prometheus happens, well, depending on, on your point of view, I guess happens either way in the future or way in the past versus alien aliens. Right. And then, uh, the so third alien movie. Prometheus, I believe happened in like 2080 or something like that, where covenant takes place like, Maybe twenty years later or something like that. It's like it's like twenty. So, so this is I want to say it's like twenty one oh four or something like that. So this is this is pre Prometheus. No, no, no. It's after Prometheus. Okay. okay. Yeah. So twenty eighty four for Prometheus, or I'm sorry, twenty eighty. I think, or yeah, twenty something like that. I don't know. Twenty eighty yeah. for Prometheus and twenty one oh four rings a bell for some reason for Covenant. So it's definitely after. It's a. It's very much a sequel to Prometheus. That's why I jokingly refer to it as Prometheus 2. Because there is there are some crossover characters and they absolutely refer back to the story that took place in Prometheus. Hmm. Now if th- this brings the question, like if you were watching the movies now, if you were watching them fresh, which mm-hmm. order would you watch them in? Funny you ask, because Lucas, prior to us going to see this movie, he went on the um, um, the marathon. Holy cow. Hmm. Vocabulary failed me. Hmm. He went on the marathon, and he asked me what order. And I told him, Alien, Aliens, if you want Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, and then Prometheus. But he could skip 
three and four if he if he didn't have time or didn't want to. Right. But in order to go into Alien Covenant, you should watch Alien Aliens Prometheus. In that order. Now, what is your uh, now? What is his opinion after having watched it? Does he does he feel he watched it in the right order? Yes. Yep. He he very much enjoyed that order. He enjoyed the movies. Uh, interestingly, he liked Alien a lot better than Aliens. Okay. Which is, I, I mean, I've heard I've heard people with that opinion before, mm-hmm. but it's not by far the most common. I think the vast majority of people enjoyed Aliens more. So you so. liked Aliens more than you like Alien. I do. Yeah. Now, Alien to me is is fantastic. Don't get me wrong; mm-hmm. it's a brilliant, wonderful movie. But the movie that I can just sit down every single day and watch is Aliens. I would take that same opinion minus one aspect of it. I think Alien was the better movie versus Alien versus, you know, between Alien and Aliens. Mm -hmm. I think it was the better movie. However, Mm -hmm. I agree that if I'm going to watch one of them on a continuous basis or a semi-continuous, I'm going to watch Aliens. Right. So I think I think we worded it differently, but I think you and I are on the exact same page with that. Yeah, it's just uh, yep. a- Alien, the way the Alien set up, the, the sense of suspense, the very little that they actually put into it as far as like um, uh, horror, or, uh, horror, horror and gore. I was thinking horror and gore and added into horror, which makes me just think of, of the tiny little white panties. Um, <laughs> I, I just think it was, it was a more interesting and better laid out, especially for the time movie. But it's not as fun to watch. And right. I think Aliens really adds in the the action and the adventure and the comedy. There's not a whole lot of comedy in Alien, you know. Right, right, right. And Aliens is just oh so quotable. I've right. probably said every line of that movie in regular conversation. <laughs> <laughs> nice, um, man. So since you weren't watching Alien, uh, what what sort of uh, media activities were you involved with? I resurrected. <laughs> See what I did there. I resurrected a show from Podfade. Really? A show called Undaunted. So a show, yeah. A show that you created, mm-hmm. Undaunted, mm-hmm. that most, most of our audience has never heard of because it's been so long since there's been an episode. You shut your fat mouth, <laughs> but you're not wrong. Um, it, it's, a, uh, it, it's, a, it's a show that I, in, I, I, I don't say interview. I talk to podcasters about podcasting and... Uh, Really, it's just like the the title, you know, title, it's Undaunted. It's Not Afraid. I like to go in there and ask, uh, what went wrong? Where did you screw up? What could you have done better? Where did, where did you have random success that you didn't expect to happen? And, you know, I've only, I've only had one person that didn't want to share their numbers with me uh, versus like, or shared them with me, but not on the show. And... Really, the numbers are, are 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 there, man. It's like if you're into podcasting, it's you're you're a hobbyist until proven otherwise. It's really what it comes down to. Mm. And you're a hobbyist until you can pay your bills. It, it's even then, it's still <laughs> you're hoping that it, it stays it stays lit, right? Right. Um, but it, we, I had uh, SP uh, Stargate Pioneer from last week. I had him on on uh, on the show, and I had a couple more more scheduled. I had to reschedule because of some. Um, and I want—I didn't want to be half into a, a a talk to people over pretty serious subjects. I mean, a lot of people take podcasting very, very seriously, and mm-hmm. obviously, we don't on this show, as you can tell by watching any of the episodes ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> but hey, uh, we have fun doing it. <laughs> but but that was uh, that's that's what I did this week, and man, it, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to sit down and actually have that mindset and ask the questions and and talk to people about what was going on behind the scenes on podcasting. So yeah, right on, right on. Um, That's a really fun show. The last published episode has Tom Merritt. In yes, it, if I correctly. Yeah, very great episode recorded live at South by Southwest 2016. Yep, outside very Darwin's cool Pub. Because uh, I look forward to hearing the new episodes. That's that's fantastic. I, got, I think I had twelve more scheduled. Twelve more people scheduled to be on. So yeah. So speaking of ways that that we can uh, try to pay our bills. Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. Mm-hmm. What can people do there? 
uh, they can uh, they can contribute. They can find a bunch of extra stuff from behind the scenes and post show, pre show kind of stuff. They can also and get this. I know this is this is this is hard. <laughs> they can listen uh-huh. to the alpha episodes of this show. Yep. And Super fans dig them, dude. Oh my god! If if you're listening to them, if you've actually heard them, they're great. If you're not willing to reach out and find the alpha episodes of this show, zero blame attributed to you. Like I get it, I understand <laughs> completely. Yeah, no, it's it's really cool stuff, and uh, we really appreciate it. We we love all of our patrons. Uh, it, it it's so cool. Give a dollar, and you have access to all of our stuff, pre-shows, right. post-shows. The Gloria Young interview is still a patron exclusive, so get in there and check that out. And that's, uh, that's only a patron exclusive because we, we screwed up and didn't release it to the wider public on Mother's Day. Let's just be honest. That was just yeah. lack of planning on our part. So, Well, we have, we have a plan B, so that's... Um, general public will eventually get a modified version of that, but if you mm-hmm. want to hear the basically uncut version, basically chop the beginning and the end off, uh, so basically a raw version of that show... Uh, check that out. It's patreon.com slash ritual misery. Hey, um, we, we were talking about language before the show and I would like to continue talking about language with you. Okay. But what you got me before we do that. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I, you were expecting something there and I didn't bring it forward. Kind of like massive did with the patch 1.7 or one point. 1.61 for the division over the weekend. They patched the game. They brought in a bunch of new features and the game is fucking broken. It's fucking broken. There okay. are certain things that you can do on the game now. Like there's no challenge. You can just run through and destroy everything in the game. Like the game is a first person shooter and you're put in these scenarios where you and your team have to go through and figure out how to beat the people. And you're doing, they're all bullet sponges. Cause, cause you got to shoot them like 500 million times to get them to, to die and everything else. They brought in the features, but they broke the fucking game. And I was, I wanted to know, have you ever had a game where it was a patch and then all of a sudden it was fucking broken because they patched it. And I don't mean like, Oh, this feature doesn't work. I mean, the game itself, there's zero point in playing the game for the intended purpose of entertainment because the, the patch broke app. the game. I've had an iPhone app, like a, a game on iPhone that was patched. It was some it was just some random thing that I just picked up and, you know, played when I had mm-hmm. 30 seconds spare time. Uh, but yeah, it got patched and then it, it immediately upon the load screen completing its little thing would just close the app. After it was mm. patched, so and I don't even remember what it was because I deleted it right after. Yeah, this. Um, so they added they added loadouts like where you can load these specific weapons and armor, and then you can go mm. choo- choose this loadout, and it automatically change everything o- over for you. They added that, but it has become the AI is completely broken. So the the enemies will come into a room. They're supposed to come in, take cover, and actually start shooting at you and stuff like that. They'll come yeah. into the room and just stand there at the entrance while you're just barreling through them. Oh, geez. Um, they planned this this patch for weeks and weeks and weeks, and there was a test server that was running during that whole time, and everything was working fine, except now this release they released it on like Tuesday night, and here it is Thursday, and they're planning a patch tonight, like an emergency patch tonight. And I can only imagine it's because they fucking broke the game. Right. Oh, I wonder if God. Chat Realm has experienced anything like that. Any um, any not just games, any software that was absolutely just completely broken by a patch that was supposed to improve things. They added a feature. The feature is no longer playable. Man, uh, so today's kind of a significant day. Mm -hmm. 40 years ago, exactly, on May 25th, 1977, Star Wars was introduced to the public. Where were you, dude? 40. I was in my fat mama's tummy... (laughs) <laughs> I was my mom was like incredibly incredibly pregnant with me mm. 40 years ago like to the point where she's like oh my god oh my god I, uh, I, I need to have this baby oh lord oh lord <laughs> I can't go on I gotta have this baby uh, mm. that's what that's where I was mm-hmm. uh, 40 years ago man uh, dude 40 40 Star Wars it's 40 that means that we're 40 uh, that- yeah it's 
It, I think it's really good that you're finally coming to this realization because it happened to me uh, on this show uh, about a month ago. So a month and a half ago. <laughs> one of the funnest episodes that, that we've ever done, in my um, opinion, from my perspective. That was one of the funnest shows ever. The, the um, thing that kills oh, me really? about this, the thing that really bothers me is that you can't, you cannot go out right now and find for purchase or download or streaming or whatever the original Star Wars movies. That's the part that gets me. Like, you can find it on the shelf. You can buy it. It's used or whatever else. But you can't buy... Like, you can't go to Walmart or you can't go to Netflix and watch the original Star Wars movies right now. They did They did for a while. Uh, they, they released a box set of the original three movies, like the theatrical releases. Mm-hmm. But I, did, I didn't watch them to see how genuine that claim was. Because there's so many versions of Star Wars. Like when I say Star Wars in this context, I mean A New Hope episode. What we know of now as Episode Four. The original theatrical version did not have in the crawl Episode Four, A New Hope. Right. So if you get something, a version of the movie claiming to be the original theatrical release, and it says Episode Four, A New Hope on it, they were lying to you. So what was the first uh, change? The first change was mm-hmm. adding that to the crawl. Like that was, they the, did that was the very first else. change? Yeah. When they re-released it in the theater, the I think it was uh, basically a year later, they brought it back to the theater because it was, you know, people were just demanding it. Mm-hmm. They wanted to see it for their 17th time in the theater. Uh, yeah, they, they went ahead and threw the episode four, A New Hope, on there because by this time, George had written The Empire Strikes Back or at least the outline for it and had decided, you know what, let's make this Let's serialize this thing. Let's make it have this uh, Flash Gordon feel to it of the the old old time cinema serials uh, like the Batman and 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 uh, Dick Tracy mm. and you know the aforementioned Flash Gordon. So he put Episode Five, The Empire Strikes Back, at the beginning of of that one. He's like, you know what? We need to when we put this back out, let's put this on the crawl. Episode Four, A New Hope. So did it? It, was it the episode four part or was it A New Hope? Because I don't think I've ever seen it when it didn't say A New Hope as, as like the title of the crawl. Uh, no, I'm I'm pretty sure they. So I've only seen the original theatrical version once, hmm. and that was a couple of years ago. Someone locally had a copy of it and showed it in a movie theater for a charity, and that was super cool. But if I remember correctly it doesn't say episode well i know for sure it doesn't say episode four but i'm pretty sure it doesn't say a new hope either i am uh now looking it up long time ago in a galaxy far far away of course it's on youtube so take that for what you will okay there's a star (laughs) wars thing all right cool it's all uneven and janky and kind of goes it doesn't go out in a smooth motion it kind of oh nope it is a period of civil war there's no new hope or anything else on it yep Wow. So yeah, all in all, there's probably been close to, if not more than ten versions of Star Wars. Wow. That's nuts, yeah. man. Crazy. I, yeah. So uh, good luck. Good luck getting your hands on an original versions. Right. I, I just want to see one that doesn't have the special effects and stuff added to it that came out in like the late '90s or whatever. Like that was. That was interesting, that's, that's, but for that to be the the official version really just pisses me off. Yeah, there's some things that I really, really like about the special editions, if you will, uh, because that's what they were called when they originally released them in '97. Mm-hmm. I say originally when they yeah, when released they, the big when they, time when they originally re-released the 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 uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 uh, so probably like eight versions ago. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a there's some things that I really like that they did, but there's also some things that are like, dude, no, no, no. No, no. Like, tell me if I tell me if I'm getting this wrong from you, be, but for me, it's when they added the extra scenes, the extra like the the extra backgrounds on Tatooine, and you know they had little little figures and they just kind of filled out the city more. Mm-hmm. I was fine with all of that. Um, I was fine, I was fine with, with all of it except for the original shot. It was just like overly crowded, and you had like the the brontosaurus fucking walk in front of the camera. I think mm. I think that was a little overdone. But overall, 
filling out the city. Yeah, right. that was that was a, I think that was a good um, choice. The 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 enhanced versions of the explosions where it wasn't just a sparkler blowing apart yes. and sparkling or coming towards yes. the camera, but it was kind of like it had this concussion to it, and the sounds were enhanced where it had that 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 bass thump as it was going by, even though in space you can't hear yep. anything. I, I enjoyed all of that. It was the it, like it's kind of like music, you know. I, I enjoy all music up to about eighty percent, but that last twenty percent is just too much. It's too country for me. It's too rap. That's too yeah. This yeah. was too special for me. It just right. Well, and Jackie points out Han shot first. Uh, absolutely, uh, by far, by far the worst thing that George Lucas did when he made the special edition was making Greedo shoot at Han, miss. And then right. have Han shoot and kill Greedo because it's, it because it it, it 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 qualitatively changed the character. Absolutely. So not to mention that scene looks like crap because looked, they had to like freeze frame, move his head over, and then bring it back because that was the only way they could make the angle of the of Greedo's gun miss his. Uh, it was just ridiculous. So yeah. what what the hell were they doing? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's completely crap. Whatever. Um, uh, so anyway, on, happy birthday, Star Wars. Moving on from that, um, <clears throat> I have three words in the English language that I hate. I absolutely hate them. It was it, 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 in my mind. There was never an appropriate time for these words to be used, although the words themselves are necessary. For the English language to have. Okay. Those three words, nondescript, indescribable, and I can't remember the third one. <laughs> like, it's just that unimportant. Indescribable is a word that you have been railing on for about as long as I've known you. Yeah. The the thing about the, the indescribable word indescrib- is my is my first indescribable is my first most hated word. <laughs> I have always taken indescribable to mean that I myself lack the ability to adequately describe the thing that I wish I could describe to you. I I lack the ability to to show you the beauty that I see in my mind, like I, you know, or, or whatever the, you know, so, so to, you're saying is, is perceptively or perceptibly per, percept, uh, shit. Another stroke just happened. <laughs> it's, it's subjectively based on your perceptive. That's, that's how I take it. Yes. So if I say that, man, that, that, uh, that sunset was just, Dude, it was undescribable mm-hmm. or indescribable. Uh, I, first of all, I'd never say that. But if I heard someone say that, I would take that to mean that he lacks the word, he or she lacks the words to to be able to paint that picture for me. I would have just had to see it, or uh, uh, I don't know. Like I, 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 maybe I take too much implication mm. from it, uh, but and to me, I've always just taken the word in its 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 own value. Mm, if you t- mm. if you look at the word, it contradicts the word the f- the formation of the word itself. I am going to use an adjective to say that I cannot make an adjective. Right. Yeah. Right. It's indescribable yet you just described it by saying it's indescribable. It's it, But indescribable does not describe it. Even though it's a it's technically an adjective, with the, which an adjective is a descriptive word. Indescribable doesn't describe it at all. Further evidence. It's just grammar. <laughs> <laughs> it's only an adjective because it has to be. Okay, so so let, let me... And, and the nondescript follows all the same rules. It's You're saying right. it's nondescript, but you're by saying it's nondescript, you're describing it. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I can't remember the exact sentence... But I finally found a way to make this word make sense. Okay. I cannot wait to hear this. You know when people say same difference? 
Yeah. I've and, had a problem and, with that and, since I was about eight. And it clearly doesn't mean what you're saying. It, it <laughs> like the meaning that it has doesn't doesn't mean what you're using it for. People say yeah, same difference yeah. as in like, oh well, that's a car. Well, it's a truck. It's same difference. No, yeah, same thing. Same difference to them means same thing. Right, but it, it, that's counterintuitive to to what the word actually means. Okay, <laughs> same difference would be. Um, this truck weighs 4,000 pounds and this truck weighs 3,000 pounds and they're both carrying a load of, uh, you know, the, the, the 4,000 pound truck is carrying a 3,000 pound load and the 2,000 pound car is carrying a 1,000 pound load. The weight difference between, uh, th- between the load and the car is the same. It's the same difference. I'll it's take com- your word for that. It's comparing two mathematical solutions. Or differences. Right. Which, <laughs> we, yeah, I'll take your word for it. I do not math in public, like as policy. I don't do that. <laughs> you can't even grammar math in public. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, tr- I at least try to grammar in public, and it okay. doesn't always work. But. So when, when someone says it looked like this, the car had this, the car had that, the car had this, but those were all removed, and those were the only descriptors that you know for the, for the car, it is now indescribable. So you okay. ha- it has to be based on something, but now you've taken away the descriptors that you have for it. Now it is indescribable. <sighs> I know. I know it's a reach, and I can barely... <laughs> I can hey, barely... If this is the thing, If this is the thing that helps you sleep at night, and be at peace with a word that's been in the English language for a very long time, then I'm all for it, man. This is exactly <laughs> what this word means. It is now what it means to me. I still don't like nondescript. Nondescript <laughs> yeah, still word. pisses me off. Just forget that word. Pretend that you've never heard that word. <laughs> Nobody says nondescript. I've actually seen nondescript written in, in uh, literature more than I've seen indescribable. Yeah, I, yeah, that's yeah, that's probably the same with me. And it's it's not always like, oh yeah, who's was, was driving in a nondescript truck? <laughs> <laughs> I drive an indescribable car. Uh, <laughs> it used to drive a blue car. It's no longer blue. Now it's indescribable. <laughs> we have invented a new color, <laughs> and the- that is the color of this car. <laughs> What color is it? Uh, I can't describe it. It's so far indescribable. <laughs> uh, fucked indescribable. <laughs> hey, man, uh, I know you didn't, but uh, I had one of these this week. Your turn. <laughs> Damn it. All right, so... A uh, who I'm sure is a wonderful young man, Dong Wu Jong, put on a I, talk called "The I, Art of Boat Making." I just wanted to hear you say "Dong." I know, <laughs> I knew that's, I knew that's exactly what was happening. Uh, so uh, yeah, the art of bow making. How how was that? Man, basically, he comes out with a uh, this this dude grew born and raised in South Korea, uh, and he uses the base or the conversation that Obama he claims Obama said that that American schools should be more like South Korean schools where they go to school for a month longer than American schools do. And this kid's basically like, yeah, yeah, it sounds great. Except uh, the other name we have for it is pressure cooker. And I was like, Ooh, this could be interesting. Okay. Essentially he found making bows like bow and arrow bows, like actual bows making those from natural materials near his home in this little park of mulberry trees using the wood for the, from them and uh you know acquiring his own sinew and everything else was his escape from the pressure of going to school and he was still learning he was still doing math he was still doing geography um in learning about all these different areas, plus history by looking back at how bows used to be made and and uh, the tribes and everything else of the area that he was living in in South Korea. 
he basically wrapped all these different subjects into something he truly enjoyed and found an escape from the academia that mm-hmm. he was still being subjected to because of this uh, this this art form. So he's is it safe to say he is an advocate for summer vacation? He's seen that way, yeah. I don't know many kids that aren't though. I mean, his kid's like fifteen. <laughs> Right. Yeah, but I he, think the people he, he that said, are he said he would acquire wood during school field trips. He'd go to the zoo and 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 <laughs> <laughs> I used to acquire wood in math class. I used to get wood in Spanish class. Oh, um, yeah, especially my uh my junior year. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um so yeah, it was it was just interesting and Hold on. Shh, shh. I'm thinking about Spanish class. Señorita Skinner. Okay, go. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, what? Who? Huh? <laughs> um, yeah. It, it was. It was really good. It was really. Uh, it, was, it was eight minutes. Um, I don't even know that I really finished it because I kind of gleamed all the information out of it from the first few minutes or whatever. But yeah. it was great. I thought it was interesting. And he goes through and he shows his bows that he derived, like how to how to develop the best bow that he could with the materials that yeah. he had through all this trial and error. And then compared that to the bows of uh, throughout history and like museums and how similar they actually are. Very cool. So um, I, I, it's it's like eight and a half minutes, man. It's it's pretty cool. It's a nice little jaunt through South Korea and some of the parks and academic activities that they have there. So it's pretty cool. Excellent. I'll check that out. Dong Wu Jung. Very cool. Yeah. Um. What else we got, man? Um, shall we shall we talk about Molly Wood a little bit more? Oh yes, yes. Speaking of wood, uh, Molly Wood was supposed to be here tonight. Uh, we're going to recap from the beginning of the show for the chat room that showed up since Molly Wood was supposed to be here tonight. She was supposed to be here two weeks ago. She has now flaked out on us twice. I don't want to say flaked out in like such a bad way. <laughs> I mean, hey, she she actually endorsed publicly shaming her. So if we if we got to say flaked out. Then uh, I would say that's wholly appropriate. Oh, okay, okay. So she flaked out. Um, we're gonna reply back to her email that, that she said that she couldn't make it tonight because of life reasons. Um, and we wanted to use as many puns and off uh, kilter, off kilter uh, uh, statements as possible. So we wanted some help from chat room. And we are going to go ahead and do that. So those of you who weren't in the know from the beginning, there you go. And we will get to that immediately after saying a few things about uh, RateBeer.com. Man, RateBeer.com, I I found that site when I was in Germany, when I was just learning about the wonders of craft beer. Hmm. And I've been reviewing beers there ever since. Um, Check me out. I'm username Del Noche on there. Uh, it's ratebeer.com. Now, uh, are you lately, still are you still using Rate Beer, or did you just wholly switch over to Untapped? Well, the difference is, if I sit down with a new beer and actually pour it into a glass and get a chance to, you know, really experience the beer, I will write a review on Rate Beer. But if I'm out at a pub, I'm like, yeah, give me another one of those. What was it called again? Oh, right on. That's when I use Untapped. Hmm. Uh, if I do a full blown review on Rate Beer, I will also check it in on Untapped there as well because you get badges and notifies your friends and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool. Now I uh, have, I have see there as well several beers that uh, we acquired during one of my last trips to Fairbanks and well, like my only trip to Fairbanks, but several Trappist beers that I had never had before. And my sister in law are going to are going to rate those here very shortly whenever. Whenever I'm not on the the happy pills and I can drink legally, yeah, yeah. And I say that because I don't want to have a beer that blows my mind. And someone be like, "Oh, he was drinking, he was drinking and doing the drugs and stuff." <laughs> uh, yeah, um, no, very cool. Uh, you you've known for a long time. I'm a huge fan of the Trappist beers. Hmm. Uh, that's really cool to find them in Alaska because there's not many places on the planet farther from where Trappist beer is produced than Alaska. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very cool. Or is it actually closer? I don't know how that works out. Like, how many hours uh, off is Germany? Uh, you know, at, uh, public. You know, math, I right? think as the crow flies. Well, no crow would go that direction. But if you draw a straight <laughs> line, 
We have Ravens like here. Distance, it might be fairly the, the similar. Uh, I don't know. I, similar I, distance, but nobody, nobody, absolutely nobody flies over the North Pole, like over the top. So to actually travel with the beer, ship the beer, it's gonna, yeah, Alaska's far. We have Ravens here. Yeah, like real Ravens? Like the size of a small Cessna Ravens. Would you call them craggles? What the or fuck Ra- is a craggle? Craggle. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> oh, it's a Schwood thing from Night Attack this week. Oh, uh, see? He I'm out of Ravens I'm, craggles. Craggles. Is that like Craggle Rock? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I thought of, too. <laughs> we need more Craggle Down Rock. Down in Craggle Rock. Down. Hey, um, where can people find you on Twitter, dude? <laughs> At RM underscore Del No J. Sometimes I'm very vocal on there, and other times I'm not so much. This week has been one of those not so much, uh, but check me out. I am bound to get very vocal and sometimes even very funny. So check it out. At RM underscore Del No J. What about you, dude? Did you say you're bound to get very funny on Twitter? Yeah, it's, uh, you know. I don't know dog- if we have that long to wait, though, dude. Well... I, mean, we're I know, about- man. I'm due. I'm due. I, <laughs> I think I've had like two good jokes on there, and it's been a while. So apparently, it's not craggle; it's grackle. Grackle, craggle. Uh, so, okay, whatever. It's a made awesome. up word anyway. So, uh, uh, well, but, yeah, but Crunchy, which is definitely her real name, uh, corrected us on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane. You can find the show at Ritual Misery on the old Twitter. And uh, you can always email the show, Ritual Misery. Wait, 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 wait. Podcast at RitualMisery.com. That's it. Yep. Cruise on over to RitualMisery.reddit.com to give reviews of the shows. And if you're really into reviews, cruise on over to iTunes. Give us a five-star shitty review. That's five-star <laughs> shitty review. And uh, make sure that happens. Dude, we have... So many things to be thankful for the show, and it's it's uh, the listeners and watchers are just one part of it. Uh, I want to say thank you to you for being here, and thank you to Kevin McLeod for uh, providing this awesome theme music. Yeah, man, hell yeah, Kevin McLeod in Comptech.com. really cool stuff there. Uh, find whatever. You need for- Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> so maybe I need oh. to turn that up because you clearly didn't hear it.